Hello, I'm Jeremy Burkhart. I'm the PI for the Changing Landscapes, Changing Lives Network. So this is just a, a quick update on what we've been, been doing. Um, so the, the aim of the network is to investigate the potential of na narrative and biographical perspectives for improving landscape decision making. A lot of interesting work has been done in this area recently, but we still feel that, uh, that, that in terms of um, how that's kind of um, brought through into, into actual kind of landscape decision making, um, and thinking about managing landscape um, and access to landscape, there's a lot more that, that could be done. So after a long, long delay due to hoping that we were going to be able to meet in, in, in person and then eventually deciding that that just wasn't how the kind of um, pandemic situation was, was playing out, we, um, we, we, we sort of bowed to the inevitable and um, decided to hold our first, first event um, online. Um, but actually it worked um, really, really well, at least um, uh, that, that was certainly the, the feedback we, we, we got. And I think, I think all of us who were presenting felt it had gone, gone well. Um, so the focus of this, this symposium was uh, on, on um, landscape and life course. Um, so we were particularly concerned to think about how um, groups such as children, older people, um, how their kind of um, access needs, their relationship to, to landscape. Uh, perhaps needs to be taken more fully into account in thinking about landscape decision making. Um, so we had a, a great lineup for the um, for the symposium. I've listed the speakers um, on the on the slide, um, and we were particularly um, uh, uh, glad to to welcome um, Sarah Bell and Claire Hickman from the Unlocking Landscapes uh, Network. So it was really good to be. Um, it was fascinating to hear. Um, what what they were doing um, with their project, and it's it's really good to make these links between the different networks. I think so. Um, there's some really interesting papers, lots of interesting um, discussion, um, and um, I, I suppose um, that just to pick out a few kind of key takeaways from um, from the day, um, a, a really important point is that in thinking about um, diversity, we think a lot about biodiversity quite quite rightly, but we also need to think about human diversity, that um, we're living in increasingly kind of diverse societies. Um, and that means that we need to recognise that um, different people relate to landscape in very, very different ways. And we need to be kind of more sensitive, more aware uh, of the kind of different needs and um, different perspectives, different concerns um, of, of um, widely kind of varying um, uh, user groups. Um, so and kind of developing that 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 point, um, uh, and um, there, there was a sort of discussion about how, um, in, in some ways, with a very uh, with, with a very diverse or, um, uh, kind of users for landscapes, or we we, we want to make landscapes uh, as open as possible to to, um, to, to fully diverse um, uh, users. Um, that. Uh, and also with kind of a, 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 um, a great deal of change um, in terms of um, what sorts of uh, people are accessing um, landscape, how they're accessing it. Um, the, we need to be careful not to kind of make landscape too kind of sta static and packaged and um, contained. So picking up on um, a, a great phrase that um, one of our speakers, Owen Jones, um, used, um, landscapes, um, uh, he said, should be messy, they should be makeshift, they should be teeming with effective possibilities um, rather than kind of fixed and settled and um, just just kind of one unchanging thing. And kind of again, sort of uh, bound up with that was a, a real emphasis which came through in this, this symposium um, on the, the, the crucial importance of understanding landscapes as a kind of flow over time rather than as a static thing. Um, so landscapes are very much experienced temporarily um, and often it's through, for example, repeat visits um, that landscapes become um, more deeply meaningful um, to people. So um, taking that kind of um, flow through time approach and particularly looking at landscapes again biographically, seeing how um, they fit into people's lives over, uh, over um, potentially over the whole lifespan um, is, is crucial. So uh, having really enjoyed the first um, symposium, um, we, we, we held our second symposium um, uh, just, just um, 
uh, on uh, earlier this spring on, on the, the 30th of March. Um, and we decided this time that we were going to open it out to um, all comers, to anyone who um, got in touch with us and registered. Um, uh, we'd been a bit torn about that with the first um, symposium, uh, but we decided that because really the, the thing that the pandemic had really kind of got in the way of was kind of fostering a greater sense of, of a network. Um, so we thought with the first symposium, we would um, keep it just for kind of network members to try to build that sense of community and that sense of a network. But on the other hand, of course, one of the kind of amongst all the many kind of um, problems and disadvantages that um, the pandemic has caused uh, in a way that, that at least in some respects, kind of online events do have the potential to be at least, a, I don't know about more inclusive, but certainly less exclusive um, than um, just kind of face to face events with kind of only a limited number of invitees. So we decided we would open this up to, to all comers and it was great. We had a, a really good, um, a really good um, audience and some great, great papers. Um, and, and again, um, lots of kind of interesting kind of takeaways. Um, so um, that really it came through very strongly in a lot of the papers that there were still many, many barriers to diversifying and democratizing access to um, rural landscapes, um, both uh, material um, barriers um, to do with kind of, for example, transport, um, but also very much kind of um, values in terms of how landscape is presented, presented and um, uh, and the, um, the the sort of um, symbolism um, around landscape. So another kind of point that came out from the symposium um, was just how crucial it is to focus on lived experience. Again, really fits with the kind of network's emphasis upon biographical approaches, because we heard from a number of our speakers how uh, actually often the things that are stopping people or stopping certain kind of groups from um, accessing landscape and and um, uh, and and having um, a, a greater sense of ownership, I suppose, of landscape. Um, are often actually kind of um, not necessarily obvious or, or, or can be quite subtle things um, uh, and that you, you really need to kind of um, engage with people, talk to them um, and, and find out um, what it actually is that, um, that they care about, what it is that they need um, in order to, um, to, to, to be able to get to landscapes and in order to be able to um, uh, enjoy them and feel at ease in them. Um, so again, we heard um, particularly from Ollie Douglas and uh, Corinne Fowler, two, two great papers um, uh, uh, that uh, museums and heritage attractions like kind of country houses, um, uh, gardens, and even kind of outdoor spaces uh, often it, or, or perhaps almost always um, implicated in long histories of exclusion and um, of colonialism and that these need to be interrogated and challenged and that's highly relevant to diversifying access. Um, then we heard about how, um, in fact, um, we also need to think about um, class as well as race and thinking about, uh, and indeed a, a, about age, um, as in the previous symposium, when thinking about um, diversifying access to, to landscape and democratizing access to landscape. Um, and um, a particularly interesting uh, paper by Katrina Navacas, um, uh, which uh, drew attention to how sometimes local landscapes uh, don't get the funding um, or the support, the kind of profile that they, they need. Um, uh, they're seen as less glamorous than, for example, national parks. Um, but but, in, but for, um, for, for local people, um, especially, um, for example, working class people, um, uh, it may be those local landscapes that are the ones that uh, they actually um, most value um, and that they're in practice able to kind of uh, make use of. So it's particularly important that those sh those local landscapes should be funded um, and uh, presented um, and interpreted in a, in a sensitive and um, uh, effective and well-resourced way. And then the, the last paper was from um, the, the, the network's um, CI, Paul Redman, um, and so it was um, a paper on uh, the public footpath network, which we usually think of as being a very positive thing. Um, but Paul uh, provided compelling evidence that um, for all the, 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 the undoubted positives of the public footpath network, 
in many respects, it's actually historically, when you look at it historically, it's actually served to um, divert attention from um, or um, detract from um, the kind of campaign um, for um, greater public access um, to, to landscape, less, less controlled, less channeled public access, access to landscape. And the Countryside and Rights Away Act of 2000 um, from that point of view, didn't go perhaps nearly nearly far enough um, to, to creating a really really genuinely kind of um, extended access. Um, so um, uh, we're hugely grateful to um, uh, the Networks Research Administrator Caroline Bourne, who's been incredibly active on um, our behalf on um, or through our Twitter um, account. Um, uh, we've, we've built up a good number of followers through Caroline's um, kind of um, active tweeting. And what's been particularly good is that we've been able to link up with other individuals and organisations who are also working towards greater inclusivity uh, with respect to landscape and connecting, connecting kind of um, uh, people and organisations who may not have been aware of each other's work, uh, bringing these access issues to a wider audience. Um, so that's been a, that's been a really positive. Um, our blog, um, we've had some, some uh, really interesting um, blog um, pieces. You can see some of them um, here on, on um, uh, things like kind of children and, and landscape, um, uh, naming how children um, invent place names to make landscapes more their own. Um, a great, great piece on um, uh, technologies of division, that's fencing and hedging and landscape by um, Paul Brassley, one of the members of our network. Um, and um, Again, a, a, a very nice um, piece on um, uh, ethnicity and, and landscape. A visit to the countryside is always accompanied by a feeling of unease, dread by, by um, uh, Lottie Jacob. Um, so um, some, some really good um, blog pieces um, there. Uh, and we've also been active in other respects as well. Um, uh, Paul Redmond's been on, on Radio 4 on Thinking Aloud, talking about um, related issues um, and give, given a paper at um, uh, in the University of Bristol's Literary and Visual Landscape seminar series and I've been involved in the uh, children's place naming um, practices research project um, together with um, jointly with the Museum of English Rural Life um, and um, also involved in uh, alerts and uh, creative approaches um, event a great event that was back in back, back in um, last September. So our future plans, we're, um, uh, four of us are giving a, a papers at the Social History Society's annual conference on lives and the landscape, again, kind of taking forward the network's ideas and research. We've got our third symposium on what happens when landscape changes, how that, how, how uh, big changes to landscapes, um, for example, construction of um, uh, infrastructure like power stations or something, or uh, afforestation or deforestation, um, uh, closing of, of um, coal mines, whatever it may be. What, what, how, how does this affect how people relate to, to landscapes? Um, uh, so um, we're planning a network walk, uh, which uh, uh, should be should be should be should be fun. It's a sort of research walk we're planning, um, and we've got our fourth symposium coming up. We're based at Merle, and we're really looking forward to um, the Ingrid Pollard exhibition or intervention, um, which is going to be kind of staged at the Merlin Association with that. Um, a fifth symposium um, on which is, is really looking at the kind of policy implications of uh, what we've been been talking about and um, discovering through the network. Um, and then we'll end up with a, a, a round table, table discussion of recent work on biographical approaches to, to landscape. So thanks very much indeed for, for, for listening.